Hi, and welcome to Lombardi Live. Let's meet our drum channel faculty, Chad Wackerman. We're gonna explore his virtual drum room, Greg Bissonette. We're gonna learn all about your drum school. Terry Bozio, a man who epitomizes the title of his course, The Art of Drumming, it's gotta be you. <laughs> and Thomas Lang, who will bring us into his drum universe. And I wanna give you a little warning about that. He may be from another planet. We're not, we're absolutely not sure. Uh, you should be familiar with these gentlemen. Um, check out their bios on Drum Channel. If you're not, we could not be in a better company today. Um, you can get them as online instructors, of course, on Drum Channel with their courses, and they're available for private online lessons. Along those lines, when you all grew up, there was no YouTube, there was no internet. You guys were learning in a different way. What do you think about that experience compared to today's experience and how Drum Channel can help fill that gap? I see you nodding your head there, Greg. Okay, well, when I took off. drum lessons as a kid, I walked down to Eligio's Music, which was a block away. Now you can do lessons with people in other countries all over the world, and it's just fascinating that it's just the world is a small place now, but I wouldn't want to paint it. <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of dad jokes, sorry. <laughs> all dad jokes all the time right here. Anyway, that's my, that's my take. I just, I love the in-person lessons uh, and I would fly all over. And uh, Terry and I spoke a lot about how Tony Williams started teaching at his house. So you could fly LA or Burbank to Oakland, rent a car and drive to Pacifica and take lessons in person. But that was pretty, you know, unbelievable that that even happened. Most people that want to study with us, you know, it's, it's hard, but they can come to LA and do in-persons. But man, to be able to do it, with drum channel all over the world, right there. Um, one thing I've been doing a lot is, is keeping my phone nearby. And when we're doing everything, I'll say, well, let me let me make a quick video of that and send it to you. So while we're on and we're talking, I'll make a video of it with my iPhone and then I'll just text it to them. They, oh, that's what the, the world is a small place, Don. How did I do? And, and, and getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> very good, very, very good. good. <laughs> Thank you very much and we'll see you next yeah, week. No, no. <laughs> Chad, uh, you have your new real drum room at your new house. Uh, and, I do. And yeah, you have the have virtual it. drum room too. Tell us a little bit about that and your experience when you first learned and the pros and cons of maybe a young drummer not taking lessons, just thinking go on YouTube and learn how to play. Right. I'll, well, I guess I'll start. The, I, so my background was um, we lived in Orange County and um, used to drive an hour to to go to the drum lesson you know, taken from Murray Spivak or Chuck Flores. And um, I mean, that was, it was just such a big deal. It, and it took a lot of preparation to, to, you know, be ready for those lessons. Um, it was a huge effort, you know, uh, but um, it's amazing that we have the access now to, to these, I mean, I just gotta say, it's an honor to be here with all, all my Likewise. favorite people in the world Ooh, yeah. and favorite yeah. drummers here. Um, but it's it's amazing. All these guys you you have access to, you know, was that was Tony Williams. That's a that's a rare thing that Greg got to take from Tony Williams. But um, I think that's the, the beauty of it, the, it that it's so open that people are accessible. That it that it is easy to contact us through Drum Channel. Um, to do the master classes or to take privately or um, my dr virtual drum room, which is on drum channel is, is my master class series of, with the Marie Spivak method and the, the reading course and then, um, and more. And then I've had a studio built at home. So I'm teaching live at, at my, my house as well. Yeah. We're going to be doing courses here on drum channel, featuring each one of these gentlemen too. And as, as excited as you are to be with your friends, you can imagine how I feel with Drum Channel and how everybody on Drum Channel feels about you four being our core faculty of building all of the information that we wanna disseminate to all the young drummers out there. And how we'll talk a little bit more in detail about how we would do that going through your courses, plus all the other lessons. A lot of your friends are on Drum Channel, over a hundred of them as a matter of fact, showing us what they do, but we'll kind of focus on kind of the mantra of Drum Channel, learning how to play, learning what to play, learning why to play it. But but going around the 
the circle here, Terry. Going, in, in no, going way back. Way, way back. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember seeing Ringo, and that's why I want, you know, on the Ed Sullivan show, and that's why I wanted to play to begin with. And, uh, you know, you could see how he played. So that was a, a big experience for me. Then took a year of drum lessons and just kind of played rock and roll through high school. And, you know, I, I remember after getting into college and studying jazz and classical, Tony Williams, I probably copied and transcribed every one of his licks, you know, that I thought was cool on every Miles Davis record and on every, every one of his solo records. Um, so then maybe sometime in the early 70s, I got to see him play. And I just went, oh my God, he's doing everything that I hear there the hardest way possible. You know, it was just <laughs> not, not as easy as it sounded, you know, you know, using your imagination. So yeah, Drum Channel has got to be a great asset to anybody because to be able to see the real thing and, and absorb it, uh, you know, you don't have to go through what I went through when I saw Tony, for example. Well, that's part of the foundation, I think. That's part of the how. Uh, which is the Murray Spivak me method, which teaches you how to use your body and how to play the facility, the thing that we were talking about a little bit earlier today when Thomas did his live lesson this morning. He had to get up at 6.30 this morning in order to get here to do his 9 o'clock live oh, lesson. He's, 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 the, he's, the, he's, a, he's a trooper. Oh, the truth. <laughs> but but there, there's getting the facility of learning how to play. Uh, there's what Greg offers. It's all about vocabulary. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about that, which is your course. Your course is you know, all about rhythm. Uh, and you brought up something talking about the Beatles and how it affected you. I thought it was a great story, which you probably remember, Greg, when you did the show with Chad Smith yeah. and Nandy. Yeah. The subject came up. Well, how did you get inspired? This is to the young young Nandy, who was I think uh, 12. twelve years old yeah. at the time. Uh, what inspired you to play? And she said, "Seeing the Beatles," mm. which here is a whole wow. other generation. Wow. But what blew my mind was. Unlike most drummers who were inspired by that, because it was really, you, you loved what he was doing playing the drums. It was like, what did you see and what did you like about seeing the Beatles? And she just said, he looked so happy, I wanted to be happy. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And that's, well. you know, it's, 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 at the end of the, the, end of the day, you can't, you can't be around drummers and not be happy, especially these guys. Just when each one of them walked into the room, it was like kind of a, kind of a thrill. It kind when, of made you- When you're with you... these guys, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm and thanking God, right? Me too. <laughs> me too. Here's one of the biggest lessons maybe of this show, because there's great lessons on all these roundtable discussions. When you're sitting down with a band, if you make them happy, you're probably going to get the gig. Right. Uh, and it's not just making them happy because of what you're playing, it's making them happy because you're a happy person yeah. and you're going to be playing who you are. We talked about that a little bit earlier yeah. too, but your experience early on compared to, you know, the opportunities that drummers have now and what Drum Channel can bring to the table. Well, again, very similar to everybody here. There was nothing available online there was no online and also it was very hard to get even like uh, instructional videotapes and stuff from the u.s there were no where i grew up in austria no german language uh, drum instructional right. tapes or anything so it was first of all all english so your english had to be good enough to understand what's going on in the video and it took months to get them you order the uh, dci video and it's like six months wait time or something and uh so it was very difficult and I had physical drum lessons starting at age four. Very lucky, close to my house. I walked there once a week. Um, and my teacher gave me albums to check out. Uh, he wasn't really a drum set player, so he said, I don't know exactly. He was a classical guy, but there's a great drummer. His name is Billy Cobham. Check this out. So I was listening to records, trying to figure out what was going on. And then, again, a few years later, I've been playing probably for five, six years. Billy Cobham came and played in... Um, Austria and he did a drum clinic after his show the next day and I went to the drum clinic and for the first time I saw how he was playing things yeah. and all the different sounds that I heard on the record like the drums were in completely different places and looked completely different my mind was blown and I, I realized how important it is to see how a drummer is moving you know the mechanics of it and the wonderful uh, you know reality today is that we can remotely um, demonstrate. You don't have to be there in person. You can see everything from multiple camera angles at drum channel, and you can switch cameras and go, this is what my feet are doing. This is my, what my left hand is doing. And it's so clear and comprehensive and uh, much easier uh, and faster way to learn, of course. And then, you know, the important thing for me personally is, and why I, I still 
think that physical in-person drum lessons are super important is as a teacher, you want to be where the student is. You want to be able to walk around and look at angles, posture, and immediately correct something when you see something's not quite right. And that's difficult online still. So the combination of both is sort of the, the passive consumption, you know, seeing what's going on on video, seeing movement, that's really great and important. And, and sort of absorbing what a teacher is telling you. But the, the active you know, side of it as a teacher that's missing online, you know, and, and that's why I think that the combination of remote and in-person lesson is still the best thing. When I can go over to a, to a student and say, no, yeah. not like that, you know, or not like this, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, just that human touch and that yeah. directness is huge, you know, or you can say, lower your shoulder and touch the person and look at him from all angles yeah. and immediately correct things. And I think that, um, is super important and super helpful. Plus the personal social aspect of it, I think is, is fun and important. And also if you're in a room with somebody and you play and they can hear the actual acoustic sound mm -hmm. in the room, the dynamics, yeah. volume, you know, feel the vibration. The feel the vibration. Yeah. It's, it's a whole experience too. Mm. You know, you don't get that through a speaker on your iPhone, you know, that's real sort of impact. And I think that's really important too sometimes. No, that's part of the mission of Drum Channel is we are an asset to learning how to play drums. We're one of the assets that you should have in your toolbox. We all wished we had it when we were growing up where you could go online and see all of our, instead of going behind stage when they'd be coming into town and trying to get five minutes of talking with them or just meeting them or seeing them, you can see them play 24 hours a day now. The other asset is private instruction. We're a huge advocate of taking private instruction, either online, if you're not around where you can you come in and actually take a lesson, which you could in this building we're in right here. If you want to take lessons with these gentlemen, you can go to support at drumchannel.com. I'm going to go around the horn and ask, what do you think the most important things would be that a, a young drummer should learn? Could have to do with his technique or his playing? Chad, I'll start with you first. Kind of putting you on the spot here. Almost every student I've had, it, um, well, they want to know about hand technique just to be able to play things easy, easier. Um, and the, the, you were mentioning the course and, and um, taking lessons live. I have a lot of students who have done some of the Murray Spivak course and they come to me for a checkup and they'll actually, as part of the lesson, they'll practice along with the, with the online course. But then, you know, like you say, come to me and it's like, well, let's, mm -hmm. fulcrum is actually a little different. It's like right here and you can immediately change. I think it, it comes down to, and I learned this from Murray, it, when I took lessons from him, everything became easy, you know, because I was, my technique was not stopping my ideas that I had in my head that I wanted to get out to the, to the drum set, even though with the feedback technique, it's just, it's just hands. Um, but it's a very direct and, and economical way to play, and it, it, it took out, it just made music easy from then on. You know, and it also gave me longevity because I wasn't stressing when I played anymore. So I could do the eight hours app of rehearsals and, and I was okay, you know, for three months. It was, I wasn't beat up. I didn't have, I do have some students that come to me that have done, that have damage. Um, they, they're a, a couple at the moment um, and we're, you know, starting over. Murray's whole thing was like, he, he, he didn't believe in telling the student everything. Like right. he needs to use his brain. Yeah, you tell them it. enough, yeah. and then they, then they figure out. Well, this one thing, and you can do twelve different things with this one little technique, yeah. in Latin, in jazz, in rock, you know, a fill, right. whatever. So, what do you think if if somebody were to say, hey, you know, I'm, what are the most important things you think I should learn? I want to play drums. Yeah. I want to be a great drummer. Yeah. What are the things I should look out for? Well, I couldn't agree more with everything Chad said. And you've got to <laughs> learn to play the right way and not hurt yourself and do damage. You know, and really holding the sticks, right? The way you play, the posture, everything Thomas said. Uh, to me, the first thing is, why do you like, why do you want to play drums? And they would hopefully say, because I like music. I've had a few people come to me that say, I'm not really into any music. I just, I'm playing drums because I have to do something and 
well, you got to get into music. <laughs> right. Like music. And Terry just said it, the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Same here. That's why I wanted to play drums, because I like music. And I also have a brother who's my favorite bass player, mm -hmm. my best friend. And we played together all our lives growing up, and we still do today. And he plays with this up-and-coming piano player named Elton John for the last 14 <laughs> years. So he's out all over the world playing with Elton. But our thing is songs. Songs that we love and music that makes us happy. So my thing was, how do I play that song? I just wanted to play songs. Yeah, I had a great teacher that got me through Haskell Har and Stick Control and Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drummer and Rock and Bass Drum and Joe Morello Rudimental mm -hmm. Jazz. And I loved doing those, but I didn't love them that much. I just kind of did them because otherwise I couldn't take drum lessons anymore. And I'd be practicing my stick control thing on the dashboard. And like the next six exercises, my mom would be driving going, is this the first time that you actually worked on those six exercises? <laughs> Mr. McDonald said that if you don't practice, <laughs> Chapin was driving me crazy. I'm like, I just want to play songs. So my mom would say, we're not going to take lessons anymore if you don't work on that blue book. So that's what he said. You know, we're paying $6 a half hour for drum lessons. Mr. McDonald, he's going, wink, wink, no more lessons. All I wanted to do was get in the basement. I got some. And to say that my gosh, <laughs> boom, 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 which I've recently discovered is the most popular of all the Ringo beats, kick pattern wise, on the first four albums. You would think it might be boom, bop, boom, bop, or boom, bop, boom, boom, or boom, boom, boom. <laughs> It's boom, dot, goon, goon, dot, goon, goon. That pattern yeah. with Paul's bass, that's the one that he seemed to use the most. Anyway, my thing was <laughs> songs. If you if you like music young man or young lady, and you want to play music, you want to play drums, let's put on the headphones, let's go to YouTube, and let's pick a song from you know, Harry Styles' new album, whatever you want to play, and let's learn how to play that song. And so, and then the next step, if, there, if it could be a two-part, would be play with another musician. Don't mm -hmm. just sit in, your metronomes are great, we have to play with loops, clicks, tracks all the time. And I went to Chad's for a lesson when I moved to LA and he pulled out this trinome and I'm going, mm -hmm. what is that? <laughs> Anyways, what, what is that? Like, yeah. like, here's five against two. And I just said, okay, so now you're playing with YouTube. You're playing with metronomes. Let's bring your bass player friend over and see if you can go dum, 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 boom, boom, bop, boom, boom. Can you make that groove? Play to a metronome with your bass player for a minute at 120, and then let's turn it off and see what happens. Because the bass player has his own or her own vibe. Mm -hmm. Did they have a Starbucks, or are they bummed out today? <laughs> are they speeding up, or are they dragging? And you're, as a drummer, you're supposed to hold it right there. So the feel, how does that feel? Is it moving? Music, like play beats, play songs, and just get into the reason, for me anyway, that you like music. What's the great story I believe you told once on Drum Channel when you were uh, backstage with Ringo? You were practicing in the room and he walked oh, by. And <laughs> I'm on my actually my pad lately has just been the box. Could you please hand me those sticks over there? <laughs> my, my my favorite pad backstage so you don't drive anybody nuts because you know you you can be the practicing shoot? like this you know. What are you doing out here? Oh, yeah. So my thing lately is that. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Oh, that's great. And nobody really hears it there. Or you can be, <laughs> but Ringo always walks by my dressing room. Are you doing that again? <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to do that till you get on stage. <laughs> I said, but yeah, but in the middle of the show, I play the drum solo in Greg Raleigh, Black Magic Woman, or Edgar Winter Frank. Like, so I have to, and the timbales, he goes, all right, okay. You can do it a little bit. But you can drive band members nuts if you're sitting there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you get out of the room. You know. Anyway. And and for that reason, I came up with the mouse, the drum <laughs> channel mouse oh, practice pad. Oh my goodness. Which is Terry. No, what, you go. Yeah. <laughs> when you were, Listen to that. I love it. When your boss isn't looking, you can pull your sticks out <laughs> and don't tell him I said that though, for sure. <laughs> In the Chapin book, as I'm sure you know, those independent exercises at the end of it, which were actual uh, solos, were songs. I hear I hear like Olio in one of them. And Billy's bounce, but up and 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 up
which once I found that out, it made it so much easier to read. Right. <laughs> the guy thought I was nailing it, and I had and I, the melody. Yeah. I just I was just playing what I what I heard, nice. which was I guess the, the ultimate. You should be doing that in the first place, by the way, uh, Terry. You know, looking at uh, things. If somebody were to say like, what are the what are two or three key things that I should not miss in my journey becoming a drummer. I think those are two, right? And then I, I was thinking about the machine part because we always set up our drums in different ways. And mm -hmm. for uh, smaller kids especially, it's really important that they have an, uh, you know, an easy setup, you mm -hmm. know, without the tom way out here because they put the tom holder and the bass drum mm -hmm. way out at the front. Things like that, I think, are, are really uh, disruptive to the learning experience. You know, it should be comfortable and uh, everything should just be easy and within reach and uh, set up in a way where you can get around the kit without straining stuff. Uh, the, the thing I, you know, that we both talked about was to, to not hurt yourself, to release upon impact, you know, and uh, Murray's whole thing, Chad's on, on his... Uh, second finger here you know not the index finger so i i hold on the between the index finger and the thumb and i try and release the rest of the hand you know um as i hit so that there's no shock and mm -hmm. there's no damage to the uh tendons and joints and stuff and you know as hard as i've hit over the years i haven't hurt myself i can still you know i have no hand problems except for when i crank something yeah. like, like on the rack exactly that the way? <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> always you know or something at home you know like yeah. whatever it is so yeah um i think that's very important i think uh you know having having a teacher or somebody to give you the guidance to set up a drum kit that's comfortable for you is, is really important because, you know, like a little kid doesn't want to have a 24-inch bass drum to begin with. You know, you, you, you want to scale the thing down to, to something that's comfortable and easy for him and then or her. And then, um, you know, my, my lessons are mainly uh, conceptual, you know, so I find you know, there's no difference for me to do, because I'm not dealing with beginners, for say. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with guys who have played or do play and uh, just want to be better. So, you know, here's a tip about this. You know, there's, there's five elements to music, not just rhythm, right? So, you know, we talk about melody, we talk about uh, harmony, dynamics, and orchestration, what, you know, what choices of instruments to use. And, um, you know, how to improvise, what, what the compositional aspects are of drumming. So all that stuff, you know, you can just talk about and get, talk about an example of, you know, here's how I do this or here's what I do there. And um, hopefully conceptually it just sinks in and then they become a more musical drummer. You know, they have more choices to make for uh, whatever they're going to do. And, you know, for me, like, uh, when I was with Zappa, I was still pretty much, okay, is it straight eighth or is it swing? And then play the kicks, right? So with Zappa, of course, he wrote out tremendous rhythms for us to play. But after that, uh, starting with UK and with um, Missing Persons, I really started to uh, want to compose drum parts, not necessarily just, oh, it's a straight A thing, and then here's this part, and I'll go, yeah. bah, 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 bah. you know, because that's like, <laughs> that was already yeah. old in the 70s. <laughs> you know? so, so yeah, I started to, to just, you know, think a little bit more about yeah. what I could do, what do I hear, and how could I you know, entertain myself as well as enhance the music, you know, yeah. while, while you're uh, asked to do something. Like so. walking in LA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Things yeah. like that. Parts. Yeah. For the song, man. Yeah. Recognizable parts. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, just little, I remember Rod uh, Morgenstern, right? He, he said, uh, oh, I heard some of your uh, missing, or your Bozio trademarks on uh, Destination Unknown or something. And I go, Bozio trademarks? Absolutely. <laughs> goes, yeah. You know, or something like that. And, um, you know, I didn't recognize. So, okay, remember, you know, th this is a trademark. So let's use that where it's appropriate and let's use something else, you know, that's appropriate in another place. So, Like the end of Noticeable One. I had a top 40 <clears throat> gig and I said, we're going to play Noticeable One by Missing Person. <laughs> My hero, Terry Bozio, can I play the ending? Why do I play? Well, the ending is so great. What's the ending? And the people were like, and they're dancing and stuff. You know? In 1980, 
three or something. <laughs> Those are pirates. Well, thanks. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I mean, that's that, and that's uh, that was the concept. You know, is to, you know, make it more like a musical event, and uh, it's worked for me. Uh, there's times where, uh, like, say with Robbie Robertson, we recorded one track three or four different times with different people, different setups, and different studios, and. Um, Finally, we ended up at uh, the village in a small room, and um, Daniel Lenoir was was uh, producing it. So he just said, oh, Terry, he goes, uh, you know, that's all great, but what I want is like a really humble drum part on this, like kind of nondescript, you know, like this is about Robbie's lyrics or and the melody, you know? So, oh, okay. So just, you know, that's all they wanted, right? So it's like, this is not a place for me to show how much you know music I know and how many concepts I have. This is a place to just disappear, keep right. the time and mm -hmm. disappear. Yeah. And the time there's, was already there, you know, it was done to a click, so. Yeah. The and there's an art to that as, as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. And uh, one of the most amazing things is, I mean, uh, Terry is so recognizable as a drummer. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as you play, just everything, the, the touch, the sound, Absolutely. the concept, what you don't play, mm. Mm -hmm. you know, which is with a lot of it. And when you, this is getting on a different topic, but if you want to be a drummer who has a signature or a voice, mm. any musician like Alan Holdsworth, yeah. there are so many things he decided, I am not going to do as a guitar player, mm -hmm. I'm not going to strum. Yeah. So mm -hmm. guitar player who does not go right. low note to high note, strum up and down never did that right. in his whole career. I mean, it, wow. and Terry's very similar. That for years, there was no ride symbol, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right? Yeah, that's so, right. but it made you create all this yeah. other, yeah, these other, other creative well, things. That's, you know. this is from Zappa too, you know, he said, you're putting this line of white noise in all of my music, you know, when you're playing the ride right. symbol. Wow, and I'm like, I never even thought about that concept, wow. you know? Yeah. I was just a drummer. This is what we do, yeah. Frank, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, he wanted, he was, he loved Verez, which had all these different kind of textures and colors uh, in ionization mm -hmm. of uh, different percussion instruments. And he said, you got five toms here and you play these melodies up and down your toms really well. Why don't you uh, think about some other instruments like, uh, you know, a bongo, an anvil, uh, a triangle, a cowbell, and a something else, you know? And I'm like, oh God, you know, I, I just couldn't go there. So, because there was nothing there yet for me to, to go to. Right. <laughs> yeah. The wine hadn't been invented yet. Yeah, well, no, it's like, uh, you know, uh, how could I do, you know, my Billy Cobham licks work, which I had to play, you know, on an animal. You know, got to prove some good, right? Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that on a triangle and an anvil and, you know, all these other things. Tambourine, that was the other instrument. So, uh, you know, uh, but... Now, as a composer, you think from his standpoint, and you go, well, of course, you know, why, why have it just be this, you know, all the time that's in every piece of music, you know? Yeah, that's great to learn, right? And, and it's appropriate in many, many, probably 90% of the situations you'll mm -hmm. find yourself in. But, you know, if you want to be identifiable, you should think outside the box a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, I've always been attracted to those players mm -hmm. and those kind of uh, innovators. And I never thought I would be called one myself, but wow. it seems I've found you myself are. there, mm -hmm. you know. Rod Morgenstein was right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I remember going to Something's Fishy in Woodland Hills with the Woodland Hills Drum Club, <laughs> and then the guy's doing the whole <laughs> when he's cutting up the sushi. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, I went in the back, I said, can I borrow those real quick? <laughs> and, and we were sitting there, and Don Perry and Myron knew Ooh. what we were gonna do, but we were, I, I'm on the table going, yeah. <laughs> Terry starts looking around like, <laughs> we were playing Terry Bozio segment. I remember you came into the restaurant <laughs> doing that, right? Before I could see him, there was some divider, and it just went, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da. and I'm like, I know that. Like, That's you, though, man. Yeah. That's that was the night, too. Uh, what's his name? Myron got up and did Mick Jagger. It was a karaoke place, That's wasn't it? That's right. He sang. Ooh, he was killing, man. And I mean, he was dancing on this divider that Greg was playing on. <laughs> he just, I mean, he was the whole show. It was Myron. completely, yeah. Did you order two of those? I'd like to have two of those, please. Yeah, two of those, please. 
I think that's the exact answer to the question that I wanted. I think, you know, what you just said, being able to compose and be original. Mm. That's like a huge thing for young drummers to look at in terms of aspiring drummers, you know, yeah. going towards well, their what, career. There was an well, artist who said, uh, you know, look at everybody else, right? And if you need to, practice what they did or something like that. But then don't do anything that yeah. they've done, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Thomas, yes. you know, uh, the idea of, I was say, coming to you and saying, hey, I'm, I want to play drums. I just, I heard a drummer play. It's just it's something I think I'd really want to do. What are some of the, what do you think the main things are that I should look for in my aspiring career? Well, again, I couldn't agree more with what these gentlemen just said. First of all, you got to love music. You know, if you come to me for a drum lessons, uh, I hope I hope you already do love music. And the reason why you're getting into drums is because you want to play music and drums are a super fun instrument to play. Um, and uh, and, you know, the most important thing is, especially for students to enjoy the process and have fun playing music, have fun playing music by themselves, have fun playing music with other musicians, have having fun rehearsing with bands, learning songs, performing with bands. The fun factor is really, really important. And not to overload somebody with too much technique and nerdery to, uh, you know, confuse them and, 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 you know, dump this overkill of uh, technical concerns on them. You know, the fun factor is really, really important. And then the social factor is really important, I think. You know, having fun with your friends and buddies and, you know, being in the garage and just, uh, you know, communicating on a musical level and creative level and creating things together with other musicians, you know, writing a song together, learning a song together. You know, that really is the most important thing it always was for me. And then in order to make that process easier and quicker, you can teach a lot of technique and concepts and approaches and how to develop your own sound and personality, how to be creative, how to hold the sticks correctly and all that information and education just helps making the fun uh, aspect easier to uh, attain, you know? And, and that's, I think, the most important part. No matter how old you are, it has to be fun. You have to feel passionate for it. Even, you know, when you're starting and you're just a, a, a new player and you've been playing for a few months, it's got to be fun. And if you've been playing for 40 years, it's still got to be fun. And I think uh, not sort of um, over concerning yourself with all the minutia of technique and whatever is really important. It's important to know all that and to do things correctly. Like you said also, learn from everybody else, learn all the licks and chops and tricks and grooves and beats and styles, super important. But then forget about all that. Yeah. Don't worry about how mm -hmm. to play. Worry about what to play, which is part of the whole uh, drum channel mantra as well, you know. Um, and and why you want to play it, you know. You gotta love music. That should be the the main motivation. You gotta love being with other people and making music together with other people. You gotta love being creative. Um, and then you have to have a certain amount of facility to enable you to do all those things with ease. And obviously, the better you get, the more fun it does become, yes. which takes a little bit of practice. Well, practice, patience, and perseverance. We yeah, like those ones. Those are, yeah, that's my <laughs> teacher's mantra. Um, Chuck Brown, who's mm -hmm. passed recently. But uh, I was going to say, the um, ah, now it just went right out of my head. What you were talking about, <laughs> music is an art and a science, right? Yeah. And a humanity, you know, because the, the, the human you know, uh, interaction is really very important as and well. powerful. Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. never forget yeah. Terry at a PASIC convention once, thousand people, <laughs> mostly all drummers, mm -hmm. and this kid raises his hand, Mr. Bozio, Mr. Bozio. <laughs> uh, yes, he goes, that was a great solo. What are you thinking about when you're playing? And Terry just said, I practice a lot. I've got my things down. I know what I, I know, you know, what I can do, but his great quote was, I don't think I let go and I let God. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it, right? I mean, does does anybody really think I'm going to do this fill? No. It's no. like this, here's my spot, you know. And right. Total <laughs> mental blank, you know. Right. And there's something that comes exactly. out, right? right? In order to be original. Yeah. I think that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, it's just that, yeah. I, I, we all have this inside us. You know, like Dizzy Gillespie had a great quote. All the music is out there. We're all just trying to get a little piece of it, 
right? Yeah. So it's some kind of a vibration, some kind of a frequency that we can tune into and, and um, things flow through you. And when it's really happening, you're not there. You're, you're know? watching you're, it, right? Yeah, it's you're, like you're watching, watching it. your hands yeah. go, holy shit. Yeah. You know, I remember doing one of my videos. Um, I was in the middle of an ostinato and uh, I started to play something and the door, a double door opened and I could see in the sunlight because the place was totally dark, right? In walks Sheila E. And I just went, oh shit, and I flubbed up, right? And I totally flubbed up. And I'm in the middle of this take, right? And, and I mean, this is way back in the 80s where you don't get two takes, right? right? To do a, a <laughs> right. drum instructor video. video. Yeah. So I just did it twice. I do, yeah, okay, that's this again. I mean, right. totally made the same mistake twice. And then it's like, I meant to do that. Yeah, you're yeah. meant you know? to do that. The drumming community. I mean, just think about these gentlemen here and all of their friends who are on Drum Channel who are here to give. Uh, I, you know, there there is more of a of a of a community amongst drummers, I think, than other musicians. I'm not Absolutely. exactly sure why that is, but I have some some thoughts <laughs> on that subject. And I remember going up the escalator at a PAS. Remember that? Yes. Vinny's coming down. Yes, very well. We're going up the escalator. Vinny's coming down the escalator, and Greg's ahead of me, a couple of steps. <laughs> and I had to ask him a question as he's passing. <laughs> I said, and Vinny's going up, you know. And I'm going to, and Don and I, I said, Vinny, what was that thing you were doing at the end? And it's getting softer. What was that thing you were doing? <laughs> and he's kind of listening. You know? He's yelling he's like, at you. He's telling you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, was that right hand, right foot, left mm -hmm. hand? And he's on the escalator going, mm -hmm. that was right. Then I laughed and I laughed and I right and then later. Yeah. Thanks, Vinny. Thanks. <laughs> Here's a community story. Yeah. Thomas and Chad and I are playing at the Hamburg, Germany, in a tent. Oh, right, a right, 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 yeah. tent. <laughs> and and you're sound checking, Chad. And Thomas leans over and he says, You know, I live in London now, but I want to move to California. Where would be a good place to live? And I said, Man, the Conejo Valley. There's right. nothing like sunny SoCal. And I write the number down Marty Campbell, Century 21, real estate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he drew a map of the uh, hexagon. He, on oh, a napkin. Okay, I drew oh, a map. Here's, here's a playground, here's a school, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. here's Cascade, here's Wesley Boulevard. <laughs> and this guy is such a go getter. About two weeks later, knock at the door. It's Thomas, I moved across the street. <laughs> and that's why there's a Wesley Drum Center, man. Right. Wow. Because of your drum sound check. <laughs>